And it's Victoria Campbell, and she's a renowned Māori astronomer, and I can't wait to chat. So let's cross to her right now. Kia ora, Victoria. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you so much for giving of your time today, because you must be one tired, <laughs> tired wahine after all of the weekend activities. I am indeed, but I'll tell you, I'm parked up looking at a lake, and um, it's amazing how restoring and replenishing that can be for one. <laughs> Where are you right now? I'm actually at Lake Rua Tanifa in Twizel. Beautiful, because you have a home there. We have a section here, not oh. quite a home yet. Right, <laughs> right. So, okay, so I've, I, I am pretty excited because I made this call to go to Tekapo at the last minute and uh, then I realised there was all this great um, free stuff that you could do on, on the day. So we... <laughs> we, we struggled and we got out of bed and we went down to the waterfront and there would have been, what, 200 other people at like 6, 6.30 in the morning, wouldn't there, at that, at that special gathering for Matariki on Saturday, which you led? Yes, there were. And we were totally um, impressed by the amount of people who did endure that uh, cold morning start over in Takapo and... Um, we thought it was a really good start to something for the community and, and for people to enjoy if they happen to be in Takapo at that time of the year. Right. Actually, I'm interested to hear your pronunciation of tak- Takapo because I it, it's not Tak. Let, correct me. Let's do some Taraha lessons right now. How should I be saying it? Um, even though it has been recorded as Takapo with the E, um, our... Uh, archives have it recorded as takapo and so that's what we know it is and we're hoping to work with the community and the New Zealand Geographic Board to uh, get that amended. It sounds better, takapo. Thank you. I think it sounds better than takapo. <laughs> Absolutely, so do my ears. <laughs> oh, bet. oh, you must be getting used to people mauling the language but you know what, what I thought was brilliant and I wanted to ask you about your perceptions of the weekend is it seemed to me like we drove up from Queenstown to, to Takapo and people, you could feel a real buzz. Uh, not, not, there, there were children excited about Matariki. There were, and, and these are, these are people in the South who p- possibly in the past might have been considered to have closed minds to any type of Māori tanga or, or culture or anything like that. And yet people turned up, there was no judgment, there was no division. And they all seemed keen to learn and, and wanted to be a part of it. How did that feel for you? It was, yeah, it was reassuring. We um, know that there's an, an appetite there for people to find opportunities to learn more and have an experience. You're absolutely right. Um, there's been a, a lack of exposure down here or, or opportunity and, and goodwill for people to um, branch out and, and learn things. Uh, and the weekend certainly provided a platform for that, and we are really stoked with the amount of diversity and engagement for the offerings that we've had put out there for the Matariki weekend. Mm. And of course, I mean, it wasn't just Takapo where, where there was that buzz and that feeling of nationhood, I think. It seemed to be mm. across Aotearoa. Do you feel that? Absolutely. I um frantically have tried to catch up to see what all my other friends and uh, community people have been doing across the nation and it's just been fabulous to see so many uh, people engaging and having matarehi experiences uh, from, you know, light shows to kai to hotaku ceremonies to just learning something new, music festivals, all of those things are about what we think about around this time of Matariki. Mm. Also, what I loved is the messages seemed oh, just so so special after the last two and a half years for everyone. So it was, the messaging was like, stop, reflect, you know, um, take a moment, um, think about the ones you've lost and think about your future and the new year. So I think a lot of people took a lot of heart in that. Do you feel that? Absolutely. And I mean, we're sure that these are values and principles that most people can connect with and find relevance in them and, and see how it is 
all can be applicable to, you know, how they go about their lives. And for us to do that collectively, as you said, is really special and you just feel the vibe about it. Yeah, well, I just think it's so great that we've, we've finally got a day. I, I, I don't care about the politics behind it. I don't care, you know, which government, you know, brought it in. I mean, obviously, it's it's brilliant. It's happened. I don't want to go there. I just want to go with the fact that here we have finally something to get excited about and to feel that is uniquely us, like no one else in the world has this because this is, you know, and where would we be without this culture? And how how interesting is the fact that um, different whānau um, use Matariki in different ways? I didn't realise that. So there's a whole lot of things for us to learn. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And even for myself, like I'm excited to learn about how other cultures around the world, um, you know, affiliate with Matariki or Pilates or whatever it is that they call that and furthermore just looking at our shared narratives and you know as far as a public holiday I think for New Zealanders to think here's a time that we can celebrate our families and our values I mean that's pretty special for a nation. Yeah I reckon too and I could feel that with families too like they were all coming together and like um, we went to a couple of events where there was the uh, oh the, the market and the um and there was, you know, flax weaving and Māori fashion on sale. Cool. I mean, I, I see massive potential for the future for this just to grow and grow and grow. I couldn't agree with you more. I am already smiling thinking about how more people can be involved, how we can really showcase uh, local talent and, uh, you know, kind of celebrate our artists that have probably been a little bit more successful as well um so it's just going to be exciting even um activities for the for the children i think a little bit of friendly competition that uh, never goes astray at a, at a good gathering or festival so yeah we're really looking forward to uh, more people becoming involved and for to Manahuna or the Mackenzie region to be one of those you know, preferred places for people to enjoy some monarchy, some hospitality, mm-hmm. uh, and, and connect with, you know, the families, the, the community, and whoever else might be here looking for a good time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it is about a good time because I, I, I saw an interview with, um, oh, I'm, his name escapes me, but with um, one of the key organisers of, of, you know, Matariki, and he said that it's time to have an extra biscuit it's time to enjoy food, like get into the kai and, and really um, don't put pressure on yourself. Just sort of relax and, you know, and eat up. And, and the weather was so cold. So it was perfect advice. And I was like, OK. <laughs> he said, you're going to put on a few kilos. You're going to put on a few pounds. But hey, it's all worth it. I thought that was hilarious. That's right. Part, part of that planning for the future might be, you know, the old classic uh, nutritional readjustment after Matariki, yeah, you'd have to because, like, I mean, I, 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 I guess one of the things that can happen in the future too, um, in the in the following years, is uh, one thing I would have loved to have taken part in, but it was booked out. It was um, was kai preparation, and yeah. oh, particularly my other half, he was like, okay, I want to try a hangi right now. I'm just like, he, he loves loves it, and he loves um, kai moana seafood, and you know. So um, I was thinking, I heard about things happening in Bluff, for example, where. Gosh, they had everything, whiteback crayfish, you know, oysters, um, uh, uh, mutton birds, the, the works. And it just shows that uh, we, we, can, we, we can pull this off and actually, you know, really explore all natures of what the long weekend means. Absolutely. And um, I did weave some connections. For, we had some visitors in, in Tuckapur that weekend who happened to be from Bluff. Um, so it might have been a little bit of strategic alignment on my behalf for uh, next year. I would say uh, the public could expect to have um, access to some of that yummy kai moana and um, kai that you've referenced, as well as um, for me, I think all of the kai rights. So people can come together. It could be um, some really good potluck or, or markets um, to try different things. Yeah, I, I reckon too. Uh, markets, you know, are a great idea. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I imagine that now it's just like thinking caps on for 
I mean, obviously have a rest and <laughs> get over this one first of all. <laughs> but it was it was the first one. So, I mean, for there to be that much buzz for the first does all go well. Do you think, do you really, so do you think that Mackenzie Country, Takapo, will probably be a huge pivotal area for Matariki in the future? A lot of people will, will it'll be on their wish list to celebrate it there. I think I would, yeah, that, that's my dream. Um, and I have a bias, though, because I already know of the beauty and the hospitality of the re- region. But I suppose if we can share that with the rest of the world, um, then why wouldn't we? Okay, so you mentioned the rest of the world. So I guess there's no reason to think that this could be, you know, a, a, a tourist e- event, although you don't want to... What's the word for it? The great thing about Matariki was it wasn't commercial. It was about coming together and lights and the, and nature and spirituality, all that sort of stuff. But I guess it could Absolutely. be some, something that can bring... You know, overseas visitors, if they're here, they might um, they would find it incredibly interesting. I think even to be to be a part of that six thirty thing the other morning for me was one of the best things I've done in ages, <laughs> long time. That's, that's what I'm talking about. So people who are looking for um, some engagement, you know, to feel and connect with communities and and have that experience, um, I think there's a lot of appetite for that worldwide. I know that if you know, I'm internationally travelling. I want to know about the people of the place and the food of the place and the stories of the place and, and the fact that these stuff are all around the world is okay. Um, so I think that there is something there that um, people would be interested in, but I do agree with you in the sense that it is about our, our community leading it out and, and making sure that it's, it's what they want it to be because that in fact, what we're actually sharing with the rest of the world. So, in that case, do you think there's a there's a a case for um, asking for the public's feedback for how it happens in the future, right across Aotearoa? I think that as those relationships build, um, that absolutely, this is something that if if the community and the public want to be a part of, there's a place there for for everybody in it. Yeah, well, it seemed um, it seemed to be that people were jumping into it head first, <laughs> and maybe because, I mean, okay, so we had Queen's birthday um, this last you know month, but this this one feels like it's ours, and I think that's the that's the huge difference. And I know I sound like I'm evangelical about <laughs> about it and a little bit overexcited, but it's just um, how I felt that it sort of felt like there was a relief that it was something, and I'm not anti royal either at all. I think the Queen's I tell you awesome, what, but I think this is this is incredible. You you are the perfect um, promotion and advertising. I would like to think that you've come and you've been replenished and restored, and this excitement that you're talking about and the invigoration that I can hear in in your cordial, that's what we want. You know, the rest of New Zealand to feel and experience. Okay, well, I'm, I'm I must ask people, you know, if they want to discuss this today because I think it'd be. I want to hear other people's opinions and I think it's really easy. We are a nation of knockers. We always put things down. We're, we're suspicious of new things. <laughs> and I just hope I just hope that doesn't happen here. It'll be what it'll be. Um, all I can say is that I'm really proud of, of what's happened and I'm enthusiastic about where this can go to and I know that there's been a lot of positive response from the community who are who are excited to work together um, to make it bigger and better as we progress. And for me, that's the win right there. Yeah, totally. And, I mean, you're in such a perfect place too. But it was it was a shame on Saturday morning because we, we had a bit of cloud. But um, it was still amazing because the, the laser was being pointed up and we could still, we were still there watching, you know, the darkness go and the light come and just to be in that Standing in a circle, it was quite. It was just so powerful, so powerful. That's right. I mean, we did have a little bit of overcast. We saw some stars, but not many people get to see the sunrise, especially in winter. Yeah, you know, there, there's always something to take from, um, you know, those gatherings. And yeah, I'm glad that you enjoyed it, um, as did many. And, and we would like to share more as well and build understanding. Mm. Mm. 
It's a it's a, a great unifying thing that we can do as a country. So you just just a, a couple of quick questions. You probably want to go and relax for a bit, but I just want to ask you: How did you get involved in astronomy in the first place, Victoria? I got involved through my work with the iwi um, in the language and culture team. I support uh, education initiatives, and we just happened to run an education program that had Professor Ma Tamua. Um, and Dr. Hemi Fanga involved, who were, you know, avid astronomers, and they, yeah, they just sparked an interest in me, and that was about over 10 years ago, and since mm. then I've just pursued that pathway. Mm. And, I mean, there's, there is nothing more magical than the night sky. Uh, we went to Mount John yesterday as well, which was truly, and I wished I'd been there for the open day, because that was such a great initiative to have all those you know, telescopes and people to, to be able to, to go and look at that place because that is like being on Mars. Absolutely, and I think that a lot of um, New Zealanders don't realise that we have such a world-class facility in space here in Te Waipounamu in the South Island. I know, and I think um, I think they're starting to now because everywhere you go in, in Takapo, there are there are new companies popping up left, right and centre, stargazing opportunities. And like I met a bunch of Aucklanders uh, when I was on a walk with the dog and um, and they were like, oh, we're doing the, you know, we're going to do this tonight. And they were really excited and, um, yeah, and I think um, it's that magical um, uh, feeling that Takapo has that not many other places have because it is this dark sky reserve and it's very, very unique. And if you get a clear night, my goodness, it's mind-blowing what you can see, isn't it? I tell you what, we had a pretty decent night last night, so it was a beautiful way to end a wonderful weekend. By 6 o'clock I was out there and the Milky Way was glimmering at me. It was phenomenal and it just reminded me this is why we do these things and um yeah it was gorgeous Oh, Victoria, don't tell me that because we had to leave. We had, it was, it was it's just an, a, a lucrative yeah. thing to make you want to come back. Yeah, yeah, I knew it would be beautiful last night, but we had to we had to hit the road. But um, I knew it. it is, of course, everyone would have left, and that was the night to be to be there looking at the night sky. You would have seen well, a lot just climbing up a hill. Even. Oh, it was gorgeous, and that frost you would have experienced in the morning. That that's always a, sometimes a nice sign that we're going to have a a beautiful clear night mm, yeah no it's it's fantastic well i just want to say congratulations to you victoria campbell for uh such an incredible event uh in the mackenzie country and yeah look forward to um to next year's already <laughs> sounds good thank you very much it's been lovely to chat with you it's been cool take care thank you so much bye bye